Hi, in this demo, we're going to show you how to set up and use self-managed workers. To explain why you would use self-managed workers, I'll start with some context. If you're just getting started and testing HCP boundary without using self-managed workers, what's actually happening is that you're likely using a public IP address to connect to your desired target resource. And under the covers, when boundary is connecting the end user to the target resource, the connection is proxied from the boundary client to an HCP managed boundary worker, which then forwards the connection to the target resource's public IP address. So this workflow is perfectly fine when you're just testing out boundary just to see the user experience. But exposing public IP addresses for all of your resources is not something you'd want to do in production since it does increase the attack surface. Instead, we want to use the resource's private IP address and use a self-managed boundary worker as a proxy and the inbound entry point to get to the resource, thus reducing the attack surface. So let's go set that up. All right, so let's first look at my setup. I have an HCP boundary deployment running. If I click on org and then click on workers, I can see that I currently have two HCP managed boundary workers. There are no self-managed workers at the moment. Next, let's look at my Azure environment. I have an Azure VM called Ubuntu Demo that we'll use as the target resource that an end user would want to connect into. Again, we don't want to expose the public IP address for this host. And instead, we want connections to be connected through this private IP address instead. I also have this other Linux host that I called Boundary Worker. And this is a brand new Ubuntu Linux host that was just deployed with nothing configured on it whatsoever. So let's go ahead and configure this as a Boundary Worker. To do so, we'll just go back to the Worker tab on our admin UI. And if we create a new worker, it'll provide us with the entire workflow. So here's the Boundary Cluster's ID. It's already pre-populated for us. Now it's asking for the worker's public IP address. So we will go grab that as well. So we'll go to the boundary worker and we'll grab the public IP address here and we'll paste it in. And this workflow will generate a config file for us. So we need to provide the directory path where we intend to store the config file. So I'll just use the default path here, which is home, Ubuntu, boundary. Next, we have tagged for this worker. Basically, if you have multiple workers, you can give each one of them a different tag which you can use to route traffic. So for example, later when we create a target, using tags, we can selectively choose the specific worker VM as a proxy for any connections to that target. You'll see this in a bit. For now, we're going to use a tag of type Ubuntu. Click Add. And next, we'll copy the set of commands, and then we'll go to our boundary worker VM, and we'll paste in that command. All right, now going back to the worker tab, what it's going to do is create this config file for us with a bunch of pre-populated information. So we'll just copy this code, go back to the worker, and then edit this file. And then we'll simply paste in all that config information and then save the file. All right, so if we go back to our worker tab, the rest of it is basically just to install the boundary worker binaries onto our worker VM. So I'll copy this set of commands to download and install boundary. And I'll CD into my boundary directory and then paste the commands. It'll take a few seconds to run. If you get this error, it means that your Linux machine is restricting boundary from running mlock syscalls. In production, you'd want to configure your Linux worker to allow the mlock syscalls, but for this demo, we'll disable the boundary worker from attempting to perform this call. You can get more information from our docs at developer.hashicorp.com forward slash boundary forward slash docs forward slash install dash boundary forward slash configure dash workers.
So now let's go ahead and disable mlock by editing our config file. In our config file, we're going to add this one single line at the top and then save. And now we can attempt to run the last command that failed earlier, which is this one right here. And we'll rerun that. And what we want to do is go back to the top and copy this worker auth registration request. Copy it and then go back to our UI and enter it here. All right, so now we should be done. If we go back in, we'll see that a new boundary worker has been added and this one is the one that we just brought in. It's not HCP managed, it is our own self-managed worker. If we click on it, we can go down and it says last seen four seconds ago. If we refresh this, it'll continue to show that it was very recent. So we know that it's live and it's good to go and it's communicating with the cluster. All right, so now let's go ahead and create a new target that points to our Ubuntu host private IP address. So we're going to go back to orgs, click on our org, click on our project, go to target, and let's create a new target. I'm going to call this Ubuntu private IP. Then we'll select SSH. We'll select our target address by grabbing the private IP address down here instead of the public IP address. Next, we'll want to enable the ingress worker filter. So if you recall earlier, we gave our worker a tag. It was a key pair of type Ubuntu. So imagine if we had many other workers. By specifying the tag, we can selectively choose this specific worker to be the proxy of our specific target. To do that, I'm going to use this Boolean expression with the key pair. Then we'll click Save. We'll do one more thing, which is to set up our credential injection. We'll add our credentials into this target so it's added automatically to the session. And then we should be good to go. So now if we go back to our desktop clients, we see that there are two targets. One was the original test target with the public IP address. Now we have a new one with a private IP address. If I simply click on connect, I'm now connected. If I click on the shell, it takes me right into my Ubuntu host. The credentials were injected, so it's a passwordless experience. And we know this is going to the private IP address and not the public IP address because this target is specifying that private IP only. All right, so that is it for my demo. For more information about Boundary, take a look at our resources with the links provided on the screen to look at other tutorials or this specific self-managed worker tutorial that you just watched in this video.